Hey, you guys, thank you for joining me today. So I want to jump on here and talk about a topic that, you know, I've always been asked about, but it just seems like as of lately, it's been coming up more and more. So I want to address it. And that is about rent to own and lease option programming. So usually when someone's looking for a rent to own or a lease option, there's either a, a income situation where maybe they get paid under the table. So they need some time to clear up some things with that, or there's a credit issue and you need some time to repair your credit. Maybe you just even went through a bankruptcy and you're just waiting out that bankruptcy period. Anytime someone reaches out to me, for one of these options, you're going to hear kind of like a counseling session from me. Not that I'm your mom or anything like that, but I really like for people to understand what they're getting themselves into. So statistically, those rental own deals and those lease option deals, statistically, they don't work out and they don't work out on the side of the potential renter. The owner makes out on it either way, either if you go ahead and go through the clothes, they get what they want. And even if that deal falls apart, in most cases, the owner is the only winner in the situation. The reason why I kind of give a counseling session is because I want people to understand um, you know, what they're getting themselves into and really just think about the whole process in, in all. And so when you get into that situation, the owner typically will want you to put a down payment down, usually anywhere between eight and 10%. So if the house was $100,000, they could potentially ask you for $10,000 down. Now, I know a lot of individuals who have plenty of cash is the credit piece that they're struggling with. And so they absolutely have that $10,000 in this example to put down on that transaction. So you put down the $10,000, keeping with the $100,000 price point, you put down the $10,000. And so the $10,000 then goes towards your down payment. So say that rent to own deal is for two to three years out. So at that point, you can use that money, it will go towards that down payment on the house. So you will see that money back. Um, in between that time, that two to three years, you're going to be paying a monthly amount on the property. So that's going to be equivalent to, you know, your monthly rent. Now, some ways that some owners do it, they take a portion of the rent. So you might receive like rent credits um, on a monthly basis. So a portion of that may get applied towards um, your down payment like that. There's a couple of different ways that it could be done. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. But Oftentimes what happens, either you as the renter, you decide that maybe you don't like the neighborhood. Maybe you change jobs. Uh, maybe you've realized that the home needs a lot more work than you expected. And you really didn't find this out until after moving into the property. Well, when you back out of that deal, oftentimes the seller gets to keep that money that you put down on the property. So like that $10,000 that you put down, the seller can keep that money. And so you are forced to walk away with it. And this happens and is very common more times than you would probably think, but it's something that you want to think about. Also, when you think about this, you are asking a seller to wait to get all of their money. A lot of times those sellers wanted to sell the property for whatever reason. They wanted to sell it. They wanted to get it off of their hands. But now you're coming in and say, Mr. Seller, I want to buy your home, but I want you to wait two to maybe even five years before you can have all of your money. And then in the meantime, I'm going to work on this. So if you have noticed, if you have talked to an owner in this, in this case, the owner will do agree to the transaction, but they usually don't even care about your credit because they just want the cash. And on top of the fact that maybe um, if we're talking about this $100,000 house where in a normal market, it would normally sell and it's in that condition of the property um, at $100,000. 
And so they may be selling it to you at a premium because now I had to wait for my money. In the normal market, if you were buy it today, I would charge you 100,000. But because I have to wait, I'm gonna charge you 110, 120,000. So you pay a premium for the house, you put a large chunk of money down. And so if you have that money to put down that $10,000 and you're having some credit challenges, my suggestion is to have someone take a look at your credit and see what's going on. Because some of that money that you are going to use to put down on that house be used to clean up any credit and get you through that process a little quicker. Um, it might just be the way that you're paying your bills is what causes the stress or causes your credit score to be lower than what's needed to get a loan. Or if you need some additional income or additional time on your job, maybe look to get into a short-term rental. That way you are in a position um, that you are able to buy. You definitely want to, like for me, the land contract, not the land contract, the lease option and the rental own option, it should be like your last resort. And I really can't think of a scenario unless, you know, it's going to be a really, really long time before you could buy. But I really can't think of a scenario when I would say that should be the route to go. I am going to say, let's create a budget so we can start saving you more money. Let's create, let's look at your credit and let's create a plan to get you into home ownership the right way. Don't just be so quick to just put your money out there just because you feel like you want to get into something that's a little bit more of your own. Um, because remember, when you do those rent to own or those lease option methods, you are going to be responsible for the property as it's your own. So you're making this property great for the next potential owner or buyer or renter. Um, because like I said, a lot of times these deals do not go through. If you want some help and you want to learn how to create a budget, you want somebody to review your credit, you can give us a call at 216-220-7886 and I'd be happy to talk to you. Have a good weekend, guys.